Order, mem order members, the sitting is resumed and it's time now for questions to the Minister of Regional Development and we will commence with listed questions. I'd like to advise you that questions numbers 3, 6, 9, 10 and 13 have been withdrawn. And I call Ms Claire Hanna. Thank you. Question one, please. Kermer Road is one of the city's busiest radial routes. Care must be taken assessing such data as traffic conditions can vary due to numerous and varied vehicle and pedestrian interactions along the route. The latest journey time information my department has for the Ormer Road is from 2013. The data relates to journey times for cars, vans and HGVs. For a, stretch, a road stretch between the Ravenhill Road roundabout and Annadale Embankment, the average speed was approximately 3.7 miles per hour. And between Annadale Embankment and the city, Cromick Square, the average speed was approximately 7.3 miles per hour. This information is for the morning peak period, that's 7.30 a.m. to 9.15 a.m. An assessment indicates a marginal decrease in journey times on both sections from 2011 information. However, from 10.30 a.m. to 3.30 p.m., the average speed from Ravenhill Road roundabout to Annadale Embankment was approximately 16.2 miles per hour, and from Annadale Embankment to the city was 9.9 .9 miles per hour. As a comparison, at peak times, journey, uh, bus journey times have been available through the bus track system since 2007, and from this time up to 2014, the bus speeds on the Ravenhill, I'm sorry, the Seinfeld Road, Ormer Road corridor have remained constant at between 5.9 miles per hour and 6.8 miles per hour, and this includes time taken to stop and pick up and set down passengers. Data for bicycle journeys on the Ormer Road corridor are not routinely collected. A small number of time journeys from Cairns Hill Park and Ride to Belfast City Centre via the Ormer Road, and that's about 3.8 miles, have indicated a typical off-peak journey time of 20 to 25 minutes. Um, with regards to the Ravenhill Road, there are no journey time um, information available. I call Ms Claire Hanna. Thank you, Mr Speaker, and I thank the Minister for that very comprehensive answer. She will be aware that this is a pressing issue for not just those of us who live in South Belfast and use those roads uh, every day, but as you say, it is a, a wider commuter corridor, including from the St Field Road. Um, I appreciate the efforts by the Department, uh, including on uh, bus and cycle transport. Ultimately, we do need to get more cars are off the road to reduce congestion, but I think those speeds... In, in 2013, it was, I believe, the slowest road in Belfast, and I don't uh, imagine that that has improved greatly for, uh, for drivers. Could, could the Minister advise when a new assessment will be given and what further actions might be taken to uh, facilitate uh, workers in South Belfast and further afield who are trying to get to work in the city centre? Um, thank the, the member for her question and, and, and obviously take on board what she has said. I have spoken to officials in relation to this, um, having looked at the, at the responses received, and have asked them to um, update the data, um, obviously in relation to um, bus, bus lanes now being included within that as well, um, and the enforcement associated with that. Obviously, we've been trying to um, encourage um, people to use public transport and have very good information in relation to Cairns Hill, um, the park and ride there where we have on average 500 vehicles now using that per day. Um, and there's also been somewhere in the region of about 12% increase in the number of passengers using buses. Obviously also want to um, encourage um, safe usage of, of cycle for cyclists also on that route. Um, the member representing the, the area will obviously be cognizant of the fact that within that very short area, very small area, there's somewhere in the region of about 4,000 pupils enrolled in schools. There's seven schools with very high enrolment in that particular area. So that also adds to um, the congestion within that. So it's also about encouraging schools to, to use active travel methods as well. So there are a number of things which really can be um, used to, in order to encourage um, people out of their cars and onto public transport, um, but it's about making the environment much safer for them to do so as well. I call Chris Little. 
Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Can I seek the assurances of the Minister for Regional Development that the Lagan Foot and Cycle Bridge, which will connect Ormo Road and Ravenhill Road areas of South and East Belfast, remains part of the Department's plans despite uh, Unionist Councillors' uh, opposition to planning permission that was successfully granted by Belfast City Council for this exciting project? I thank the, the member for his question, uh, and he rightly says that planning permission has been granted in February for the footbridge, um, as, and the, the bridge orders have also been made um, for, for that facility. Obviously, we're in a situation where, where budgets are obviously being um, developed, and this is a potential cost between eight to nine million pounds, um, so it's very much subject to funding being made available. But, and while I recognise that this would be of benefit for cyclists and walkers, and it would also aid in the reduction, perhaps, of congestion as we, uh, as we move forward, um, that I think the, 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 look, the residents also have to be taken into consideration. Um, and I think further um, conversations will have to be had with them. And obviously, any future minister would, would need to do so before um, making a final decision on that particular facility. I call Martin O'Mullier. Um, I got a, a last one, call you. Th thank you, Minister, and, and uh, with the indulgence of the Deputy Speaker on your last uh, question time, to uh, congratulate you on your short but successful tenure. We got some things over the line in South Belfast, but in terms of the uh, traffic, uh, I suppose jam, which is which is the story of South Belfast for two hours really every morning, is the solution not, Minister, to take the Belfast Rapid Transit, which is going to be a great success in east and west? and in the future, whoever is minister, to uh, expand uh, BRT into the south of the city, perhaps right from the city centre to carry it off. I thank the, the member for his, his kind comments. and um, Absolutely, I am fully committed to Belfast Rapid Transit and, and, and have been. Um, and I think it is actually important that we do look at expanding it to um, not only the south of the city but also to the north of the city. Um, work will um, commence in relation to an assessment um, of that um, and the particular route um, should be identified. And obviously um, it's actually looking at an area where there is a lot of traffic and in order to, to ease that congestion, but where there will be actually people who will use it. And a natural route would be um, from Cairns Hill through to, down the Ormer Road. Um, so absolutely, I would be very much in favour of that as a proposition. Um, there is an outline um, timetable for that, and it's only provisional, obviously, at this stage, but um, there are, they are looking to prepare options assessment in 17-18, um, prepare the business case in 2018-19, um, a detailed design and implementation in 2019-20, and then looking for it to be operational in 2022. So obviously that, that's all very provisional, um, but I would be hopeful that that would be a, a positive outcome for that area, and obviously ease the congestion as described by the member. Moving on, I call Robin Swan. Question number two. I can report that the safety review of the A26 Lisnevna Road is now complete. The report concludes that whilst there is not an unusually high incidence of collisions along this route, given the volume of traffic using the road, the number of fatal collisions is a cause of concern. And as such, Transport and I have identified three sites that warranted further investigation where collision remedial measures can be introduced to influence driver behaviour and also to reduce the risk of collisions. The sites that have been singled out for further investigation are Barnish Road, Creevery Road Junction, Wood Green Road and Main Road Junction and Cromkill Road Junction. Police investigations into the fatal collisions are still ongoing. However, I am aware that there is great interest in this matter from a number of local MLAs, and I intend to have uh, meetings with local representatives of which I can detail the proposed measures. Transport NI officials intend to make a joint presentation with PSNI to Mid and East Antrim Borough Council to inform uh, members that of the Council of the findings of the report and to seek their support for the proposed collision remedial actions. I call Robin Swan. Okay, I thank the Minister for her answer and I, I thank her for the invite to the information session which will be held I think next Monday in Balamina. 
In regard to those three sites specifically, Minister, can you give any more detail at this stage? Are they purely remedial exercises you're undertaking, or will there be substantial investment to make those junctions safe for all the road users? I, I acknowledge you say there was an unusually there wasn't an unusually high number of collisions, but I think the number of fatalities on that road are something that all the local elected representatives are concerned about. And since I last raised it in topical questions with yourself, we have seen the unfortunate death of Carla Cameron at the Wood Green Junction. I, th and I thank the, the member for his question and, and obviously acknowledge the comments that she's made. Um, just with regards to um, each of those areas, they're very much site specific in, in relation to the recommendations um, which are going to be um, put to members. Um, they'll uh, include um, the provision of review of street lighting. Um, and also legislative changes to ban right turning movements on um, at least um, two of those two of those roads. Um, there will also be enhanced signage and road markings um, included in that. But obviously, um, that will become um, clearer whenever we have the conversation. I call Paul Free. Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Deputy Speaker. Uh, and I thank the, the minister for her. Uh, answers to date, and I thank the Minister for uh, taking up my invitation and coming down on site to the Wood Green Junction to see for herself the risks that drivers have to take on a daily basis, uh, sometimes more than once. Uh, the, the Minister mentions three specific sites, and I would agree with her that they are indeed very dangerous crossings. But what, could I express to the Minister that I believe there could well be a fourth crossing? That is potentially very dangerous, and that is the Valley Road, Shinks Bridge Junction, uh, where there is a Carnats Primary School very, very close. I have met with the principal, Mr Ian Henderson. He's been campaigning for many years for road improvements. Can I ask the minister to consider placing a fourth junction into the system? I thank the, the member for his question. The safety review considered uh, all junctions along the route. Uh, with particular attention being paid to locations where at least four <coughs> collisions have occurred within the last three years. Records show that there has been one collision at the Valley Road Junction within the last three years. Uh, this collision occurred on uh, the 16th of November 2014. This junction currently has junction warning signs, a map type advanced direction signs and advanced warning signs. Um, of the school on both approaches to um, the junction on the A26. Um, this junction will benefit from the recommendation in the report that a, a route treatment will be completed to refresh and to replace the signs and lines to ensure consistency of information to drivers. I call Jim Allister. Thank you. Uh, the Minister speaks about uh, collision remedial measures, which sounds very good. But the only thing she then spoke about is extra street lighting, extra road markings, and a ban at a couple of junctions on right turns. Surely the Minister is going to take much more structural change than that to bring safety to these death trap junctions, particularly at Wood Green. And I trust the Minister is prepared to do more than what's been suggested. And, and, I, and I appreciate um, the members' comments, and, and, I, and I'll be meeting Mr. Allister at, at that junction on Monday morning in advance of the meeting with the, with the other MLAs. Um, I think that the meeting will actually be, will be useful for all of us to sit around the table with the engineers to look at the proposals um, and, uh, and talk about the options that there are available for each. As I said, each, each junction is different and very much site specific and there will be recommendations for each and I think the opportunity for to, to have those conversations will be on Monday and out of that then we can pursue um, any further suggestions or changes which, which, which others may feel are appropriate. I call Trevor Lum. Thank you Mr Deputy Speaker. Question number four Minister. In the Belfast Metropolitan Transport Plan 2015, the Knockmore to Sprucefield Link Road, known as the M1 Knockmore Link, has been identified as a developer-led proposal. This means that it's the responsibility of the developers of adjacent land to deliver this road scheme as part of their development. As a consultee to planning service, my department has in the past engaged in pre-application discussions with a potential developer. 
However, as delivery of the link road is dependent on future development of West Lisburn by other parties, it's not possible for me to provide an accurate timescale for this at this time. On the 28th of January 2016, I met with Dr Donaldson and other members of Lisburn and Castlereagh City Council to discuss this road scheme proposal. I subsequently wrote to Dr Donaldson on the 2nd of February 2016 to confirm that my department will undertake a preliminary traffic assessment of what the traffic impacts would be on the surrounding road network by the provision of the M1 Knockmore link. It's envisaged that the results should provide objective evidence for further discussion between Transport NI and Lisburn and Castlereagh City Council officers. The results of the traffic assessment should be available by the end of March 2016, after which I will write again to Dr Donaldson about the outcome. I call Trevor Lund for supplementary. Yes. <clears throat> I thank the Minister for her answer. It, it, it doesn't sound, uh, after all, the, the razzmatazz of photographs in the star and so on, that, as if this, <laughs> this project is anywhere near to the point where it might be put on the list to go ahead. In terms of the funding model, Minister, if I could ask you about that. You said it's developer-led. Is, is the developer of the surrounding land supposed to pay for the entire cost of this, this road, or is there input from other sources? Okay, and I, th I thank the, the, the member for his question. Uh, at present, no funding has, has been identified uh, within our current budget, obviously, for the provision of the Knockmore link. Um, and as I said, it does have a developer-led designation. I did meet with, with the council and along with, with others, who, in, including those who have an interest in, um, from, from SIB. And the proposal that was, was, was put to the department at that time was uh, a partnership model, which would, which would include all three partners. Um, hence the reason why I've asked my, my officials to um, conduct a survey. Uh, with regards to whether or not it can be regarded as a strategic um, road. Um, I do have to say that I did find that to be a productive meeting um, and I was encouraged by the proposal which was put to us from um, Lisburn and Castlereagh City Council. I do believe that moving forward that my department does need to look at alternative means of, of funding and this may in include partnerships um, with local councils and others in order to deliver on key roads. I call Sean Lynch. My, I'll get the last can call you. Minister, as somebody who travels M1 on a daily basis and there's activity taking place on the Mays Long Cay site and there was a proposed juncture to go from the M1 into the, the site, is that still a commitment of the department or has it been scrapped? I'm aware of proposals for the provision of direct access to the site um, from the M1 and from Spruce Feet. Uh, the provision of this infrastructure is really a matter for OFMDFM and the MLK Development Corporation to fund and deliver it. As a consultee to the development, uh, TNI has met with key stakeholders, um, including the director of the MLK Development Corporation, just to provide advice um, on the site. My officials will be available to give advice on roads design aspects of, the propose, of any proposal that does come forward. Um, I do understand that a, a series of transport management meetings organised by the Royal Ulster Agricultural Society took place again in advance of the 2015 Balmoral Show, um, which was held there at the May site on, in May last year. This advice of temporary signing and general traffic management arrangements in order to minimise the likely traffic disruption during the event. As part of the half town road safety improvements, um, there has been work carried out. 970 metres long, um, 3 metre wide footway cycleway has been constructed along the, um, the frontage of the MLK site at Half Town Road. Um, there are um, there are uh, a piece of work around exploring the potential to extend the Northern Ireland cycle network to the site. Um, and also uh, a footway cycleway work has commenced along, along the frontage of the site. <coughs> Moving on, I call Pam Cameron. Thank you, Mr uh, Deputy Chair. Uh, question number five, please. 
I recognise the importance of transport links to our ports and airports. The Regional Development Strategy 2035 identifies Belfast International Airport along with George Best's Belfast City Airport and the airport in Londonderry as strategically important transport interchanges. The implementation of my department's strategic road improvement programme has enhanced regional access to Belfast International Airport. Current dual carriageway improvement works to the A26 and recent announcements regarding the A6 flagship project will reinforce this. In 2014, Transport and I commissioned a feasibility study to identify potential options to improve strategic links between the M1 and M2, M22 and Belfast International Airport. A number of potential route corridors were examined several of which will be taken forward to the next stage for further study. No commitment on funding can be given at this time. The next review of investment strategy for Northern Ireland may, however, provide an opportunity for my department to look at the prioritisation of new schemes. And at that time, connections to Belfast International Airport can be considered, along with other existing and proposed schemes elsewhere in Northern Ireland. Call Pam Cameron. Thank you, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Um, can I take this opportunity just to thank the Minister for, um, for um, the good job she has done in her, in her term of office, and given this is her last question, I wish her all the best. Uh, thank the Minister for her um, answer and ask if she can advise what the findings of the feasibility study were and what discussions her department has had with the Belfast International Airport um, as a result of those findings. I thank the, the member for a question. Um, the study identified a number of potential root corridors, including improvements to the A26 and the A57. And the next stage will really be to refine the options with a view to undertaking a, a more detailed options appraisal. Um, as with everything, pro progress in this will obviously be subject to funding. Um, my officials uh, meet with the officials from Belfast uh, International Airport and with the other air two airports on a, on a regular basis. Um, these meetings um, mostly concern airport, airport noise and control of land issues, but also transport related issues do, um, do come up uh, and are explored. In the coming months, my officials will be meeting members of the Interna Belfast International Airport Consultative Forum um, to discuss a number of transport related issues, including access to the airport parking and traffic management matters. Previous engagement by the department um, with Belfast International Airport staff included um, Mr John Dorn, the then managing director, uh, and this resulted in Transport NI commissioning the feasibility study to examine the links between the M1 and M2, M22 um, with Belfast International Airport. I call Oliver McMullen. For Margaret Lasken Coney, and can I first of all commend the Minister as well in our time in office? Well, will the Minister agree with me that an extension of the railway system to the international airport would not only be a boost to the long term sustainability of the airport, but would be a great uh, attraction for service users? I thank the member for his question. Uh, and obviously, when, when you travel um, to the continent and um, there, there, and you get off at the airport and there are excellent uh, rail services, well, um, absolutely, um, you would want that for, for, for home as well. And, and I do recognise the strategic importance of, um, of our airports and having um, good links from the airports to our, our major towns and, and cities. Um, but I think we also have to set that into a context of um, priorities for investment, um, particularly uh, as we move forward uh, and, and the challenges that there are. Uh, I think that you also need to understand that um, within any recommendations for um, improvements on this and to establish a real link to the international airport would require somewhere in the region of 10 million passengers and the latest figures for 2014 indicate that there were just over 4 million passengers. But I would like to, to recommend to the member that we do actually have a very good bus link service um, from the airport into the city centre um, and I, I understand that this operates every 10 minutes when we have 
uh, peak flight times and at a, a minimum of 30 minutes um, at all other times. I call Adrian Cochrane Watson. Deputy Speaker, and can I also commend the Minister, since taking over possession of, of the Minister's role. Um, Minister, um, in discussions with Belfast International, they would say to me the biggest inhibitor to growth is not transport links, it's actually air passenger duty. I'm just wondering, could you update the House, has there been any discussions between yourself and your ministerial colleagues on APD? Um, I thank the member for his question. Unfortunately, that's something which is outside the remit of my department, but I'm happy to just have a conversation with colleagues and, and to pass that information on to him. Moving on, I call Alistair Ross. A public inquiry into the York Street Interchange project was held in November 2015. In due course, my department will publish a departmental statement setting out its response to the recommendations in the inspector's report and make the report available for inspection. My department has commenced the procurement process and intend to have a design and build contractor on board this summer to help fully develop the scheme to be in a position to begin construction towards the end of 2017. The development and construction of the scheme to the programme I have outlined is very much dependent on availability of finance. A full economic business case will have to be approved by the Department of Finance and Personnel before any commitments can be given to start construction. I call Alistair Ross for supplementary. Thank you very much, Mr Deputy Speaker. And I too want to uh, congratulate the Minister for her term of office, not least because everybody else has, and I wouldn't want to seem discourteous <laughs> to her. Um, on the issue of this, obviously the, the Ulster University has, has relocated much of their, uh, their product to the city centre uh, and will be very much part of, of whatever project how it moves forward. I suppose I'm thinking particularly around safety for those students who will want to cycle to the campus or even walk from the surrounding area, and will this be part of the project that's going to be developed by our department? I thank the, the member for his question and, and I have met with um, representatives from um, Ulster University in, in relation to, um, to their project and also to what we can do as a department to, to assist them, um, particularly as they move um, quite a considerable number of students into the city centre. Um, measures are included in, in the scheme um, to provide better connections between York Gate Station and the campus for those who do want to walk or to cycle. The scheme proposal includes high quality footway links along York Street on both sides of the road and this will replace the existing fractured arrangements and take account of the increased levels of pedestrian movements associated with the development in the area. Inbound and outbound cycleways are also included along the length of York Street. Enhanced cycle provision, including improved connections to the streets at either end of the scheme, uh, which arose from the consultation process, was presented um, at the public inquiry. And the inspector's report gives their views on this matter, and the departmental statement will set out uh, my department's response in relation to this in, in due course. But obviously, look forward to to the university um, relocating and the regeneration of that particular side of Belfast uh, and hopefully it will have uh, in, in due course then um, improve um, and assist with plans for improved public transport in and around that area. I call Alistair Patterson. Thank you Mr Deputy Speaker. Given that the European funding could make up 40 per cent of the total package for this York Street interchange, has the Minister given thought to the effect Brexit would have on the future of this much needed project. I thank the member um, for, his, um, for his question. Um, obviously at, at this stage it's too soon to comment as we haven't actually had the referendum as yet um, and, I, and I'm guessing that's a, a bridge that we'll cross at that particular time. Chris Hazard is not in his place. David Hillage is not in this place. I call Kieran McCarthy. Mr. Deputy Speaker, thank you very much indeed. Uh, could I ask question 12 to the Minister, please? My department has uh, a duty to maintain all public roads in reasonable condition. Regular inspections are carried out of the road network and defects are prioritised for repair depending on the severity. Roads may also be um, 
prepared as part of planned programmes of work such as resurfacing, surface dressing or larger planned patching subject to available resources. In the current financial year, over £900,000 has been spent on resurfacing schemes in the Ards area. And I can also confirm that approximately 55% of the allocated budget for resurfacing in the Ards and North Down area has been spent on roads in the Ards Peninsula. And I believe that this represents a significant investment in monetary terms and also commitment to maintain the roads in the Ards Peninsula. As a member for the area, um, I welcome this investment and recognise the importance of investing in our roads maintenance in Ards and across Northern Ireland. And that is the end of our period of time for listed questions and we now move on to topical questions. And I call Michaela Boyle. Uh, I suppose on behalf of Kieran McCarthy and myself, I would like to uh, commend you in your time of office. Is that okay, Kieran? <laughs> uh, Minister, can you give an indication and an update um, to the House on when the Phase 1B of the A5 will commence? Uh, thank the, the member for a question. Uh, I announced a public consultation obviously for the whole scheme um, in February and that will go on until the, the 4th of April um, and this relates to the, the environmental statement for the full length of the scheme along with um, a new draft direction order, draft vesting orders and stopping up of private access and that is for the length of the route from new buildings to Ballygolly. Um, with regard, this, and this, include, this obviously includes the 1B section. Um, the current funding profile agreed to 2020-21 uh, would mean that 1A is commenced in 2017, um, and this means it should be completed by 2019. And with 1B, that's south of Oma to Ballygolly, hopefully commencing at the latter part of the five-year budget period. Um, this will obviously require some further work with DFP in and around the funding package, um, and, it, and it is very much subject to, to budget. I call Michaela Boyle for supplementary. Okay, um, Minister, um, I would like to put on record to thank your officials and staff for their assistance during the consultations and the exhibition uh, that have gone on through throughout and, and indeed their assistance was very greatly appreciated to not just ourselves as MLAs but, but to others and people who, are, who would be affected on that road. But Minister, could I ask for what your feedback has been to date on the exhibitions at the consultation? Gormalgut. Thank the member for, for a question and I have spoken to officials in relation to this. They were very well attended with somewhere in, in the region of I think 1,054 registered attendees at, at those events. Um, the feedback from the officials have been that it was very positive um, with the vast majority of people who were attending um, were very supportive of the scheme. However, I am aware that there are those who have individual concerns in relation to their, their properties. Um, and this is absolutely understandable given the, the impact that this scheme will have on, on those, those, those families really as, as we move forward through the scheme. Uh, and my department um, officials will work very closely with those landowners um, to try to assist them in any way that they can as we move forward. Question two has been withdrawn. I call Andy Allen. Mr. Deputy Speaker, can the Minister advise what parking provisions are in place for disabled people in East Belfast? Um, I thank the, the, the member for his question. Obviously, disabled parking bays are available throughout um, East Belfast, as they are indeed uh, across Northern Ireland, and, and they come in a, in, a, in, a, in a number of areas. Obviously, provision in, in car parks, um, on street parking, and in, in private shopping centres. Um, if the member does have a particular area that he believes that my officials um, should look at and where they would benefit from additional disabled bays, um, I'd be happy to discuss those with him. I call Andy on. I thank the Minister for her answer. Minister, I've been approached by a number of constituents um, with concerns around the Belmont Road. Um, they're concerned about the parking bay that is already in existence there being abused by individuals who don't have or aren't displaying their disabled badge. Can the Minister give me a commitment, and I know we're heading towards the end of the mandate, that her officials will um, provide enforcement and look to add further bays? 
thank the, the member for his, um, his question and I, and I am aware that traffic attendants um, are in that area at least five days a week um, but um, and it's, it's obviously um, for them to, to ensure that um, those, display, those badges are displayed in, in the correct manner um, and that PCNs are, are issued um, in order to um, prevent the, um, this behaviour continuing um, in, those, in those particular bays. Um, I'm more than happy to, to meet with the member um, to discuss this again further um, and also alongside officials um, if there's a particular point on that road. I do appreciate that it is a very busy um, road. There are lots of shops in the area along with um, cafes and restaurants um, and that there should be um, a frequent move of, of traffic um, um, in those parking areas anyway. But as I've said, I'm happy to discuss this further with the member. Question four has been withdrawn. Uh, Daggy Mackay is not in his place. I call George Robinson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Deputy Speaker, could I ask the Minister for an update on requested improvements to the Broad Road, Greystone Road junction in Lima Valley? I thank the member for his question and I, and I am aware of his interest in, in this area um, and I can advise that um, TNI has a scheme proposal um, to provide a roundabout at the junction. Um, I, can, I can say that detailed design and acquisition procedures are are well advanced um, and the scheme will move forward um, subject to completion of land acquisition and the necessary finance as always um, being in place. I call George Robinson for a supplementary. Thank the Minister for her rep <coughs> reply and, and could I commend the, the Minister on her term of office as well. Um, Minister, this junction is very, very busy and many road users find it very hazardous. I realise the Minister is very busy but I would I greatly appreciate a site meeting with the Minister and uh, some of my colleagues at this junction. And I, th I thank the, the member um, for his, uh, his question and I think that my diary secretary will be panicking the number of meetings probably before the end of the session that I'll be agreeing to but I'm more than content to, to meet with the member um, at, in his constituency. I call David McElveen. Mr. Deputy Speaker, um, I'd like to ask the Minister if she could give the House an update today on her department's blue badge scheme, please. Um, thank the member for his question. Yes, the, the blue badge scheme, which already provides a wide range of parking concessions for people with severe walking um, disabilities and, and uh, partially inside uh, blind, is a scheme which is valued by all those who, who need extra support. Um, last year, my department published the findings of a consultation process, and there were a number of key recommendations which emerged. And I'm pleased to say um, we received wide-ranging support for um, blue badge holders and other stakeholders. The recommendations included extending the eligibility criteria to include children aged two. Um, to three years of age with specific medical conditions and I'm pleased to announce that this will come into force from the 1st of April. Furthermore, facilitating existing benefits such as the personal independence payment to support applications will come into effect when welfare reform is enacted in June 2016. I call David McElveen for supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister for her answer. I'm also very glad that probably the last question in this mandate delivered some good news um, that I asked for her anyway. Um, I wonder, could the Minister maybe give us some indication? There have been some concerns um, historically uh, that the processing of these applications for blue badges um, could at times fall into quite a backlog. There was a lot of, uh, of time involved in getting them processed. Uh, would the Minister be able to advise us, has there been anything done uh, to ensure that perhaps a more streamlined application process could be in place uh, to ensure that, that, that these much needed um, pa passes are not sort of bogged down in bureaucracy? I thank the, the member for his, his question and, and, and I did have the pleasure of being able to go up to, to Enniskilla and, and to meet with those who are involved in the Blue Badge um, Processing Unit. Um, and, and I commend them for the work that they have been doing. Obviously, they had been under a great deal of pressure. Um, the backlog um, is, is, is being worked through, and um, I'm glad to say that the new system will simplify um, the process by allowing applicants to apply online. Um, obviously, the blue badge was introduced over 30 years ago, and during that time, the scheme 
has been operated at a significantly subsidised rate of just two pounds um, in order to, um, to simplify and to, to make it a faster system will, will require um, some um, slight adjustment in, in cost which will see the fee increase from two pounds to ten pounds but the service will be improved and um, this will allow us to move towards cost recovery. I call Gerard Diver. And just on behalf of our party, can I too uh, obviously commend the Minister on her work to date and wish her well when she returns to the Assembly. Um, can I ask the Minister about an issue of great road safety concern in my constituency of FOIL and one which I'm sure that Mr. S Mr. Middleton, seated beside her, will share also, and that is safety matters regarding the call roundabout and any plans that the Department has to put measures in place to make the call roundabout safer? I thank the, the member for his question, uh, and I am aware that there is a, a survey um, uh, and an initial analysis being carried out in relation to collision history um, in and around that particular roundabout. Um, my officials are carrying out a much more detailed assessment of that area in, in order to establish what remedial measures are required. Um, at this stage, I don't have that information, um, but it should be with my department within the next couple of months. I call Gerard Diver. Thank you very much, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and can I thank the, the Minister for her uh, response? And I look forward to the uh, results of that review. Can I ask the Minister, um, can the Department ensure that it has taken into account the, the significance of this particular roundabout being on a cross border route, obviously, and a lot of traffic, not just in the foil and dairy area that goes through it, but in that transnational route uh, nature? Uh, there was a much publicised incident recently involving the PSNI that even had an accident on that route. So, in whatever criteria is used in the uh, department, can we ensure that roads that are of particular risk are brought to the top of whatever list is being considered? And, and I thank the member for, for his question. And obviously, I am familiar with that roundabout. Um, and indeed, as he says, it is a busy roundabout. Approximately 50,000 vehicles actually use that on a daily basis, which is, which is quite um, incredible. Um, there have been traffic surveys carried out in the last couple of years in advance of this, obviously. Um, but I think it would probably be, be prudent for us to wait for the, um, for the assessment to be concluded um, and then move forward from there with regards to where it sits within the priority. I call Patsy McLuhan. My good last year in Corley. First of all, my apologies for not being present for a question. Yesterday, it, it appears the agenda moved much more rapidly than I had anticipated. So, um, <clears throat> but anyway, um, can I ask the minister just how much more extra has been allocated for roads maintenance uh, within the district council area of Mid Ulster uh, this year? Thank the, the member for his um, question, and I don't have. Very specific, um, in, have very specific information in relation to that, um, but he will, be, he will be aware that I was, I was able to secure additional funding in November monitoring round, uh, and also in the earlier part of this year I was, I, I was able to um, secure um, some initial s uh, efficiency savings which amounted to somewhere in the region of £3.2 million, which has been distributed around um, the divisions. Just with regards to the Mid Ulster um, area, um, and, I, and I'm not sure whether, that, whether this will include um, all of your um, constituency, um, but certainly including Cookstown, Macrofelt and Dungannon. An additional estimated £1.4 million was received for structural maintenance and around 800000 for routine maintenance. I call Patsy McGlone. Uh, uh, thank the, the Minister for her response. And, um, the, the key issue has been numerous complaints have been, uh, certainly I've been receiving, about uh, potholes and the increased damage that's been done. Indeed, I had one there fairly recently of a guy who sent me a photograph of the rim of his car, which had been very severely buckled. Um, again, the Minister, maybe, and I don't have to have the information today, if she could provide me in, in writing at some stage details around if there has been an elevation or an increase in the number of claims for damage as a consequence of, of potholes uh, in that particular area in Mid Ulster. Member for his, his question, and I think all members in the in the uh, in the chamber will probably be able to relay um, similar um, stories in relation to, to to areas. As you'll be aware, there ha there was um, additional monies have been made available. Um, the um, 
the divisional managers have been working very hard in order to work through backlogs and obviously prioritising um, main routes in relation to that. Um, there, are re there are figures in relation to, um, to claims which have been made against um, damage to vehicles and I'm happy to provide that information to, to the member. And that is the end of our questions to the Minister uh, for Regional Development.